Hi everyone, how are you? Um, I hope you're doing okay and I hope your preparations for the holiday seasons are going well. Um, I'd really like to say stay safe. I know a lot of politicians are saying uh, go out and meet people and you can form bubbles and stuff. But seriously, it's getting so dangerous with COVID-19. I, I don't want to cause any hype, but I really, really want to say, you know, stay safe. Don't take extra, don't take extra uh, unnecessary risks. Take extra precautions, though, because you can always celebrate Christmas next year. You know, you can always be here next year. But whereas if you catch COVID and you, you get ill, you know, you're going to be in a world of problems. So just look after yourself and I hope you have a really good uh, time during the holidays. Hopefully I'll try and make some videos before and after as well. But I just wanted to get that message out. So it is, I think I already said it, but it is Wednesday, the 18th of December, 2020, and it is 11.03 p.m. at the moment. So, uh, there we are, on, on my night watch. So uh, I got some additional provisions uh, that I had ordered, and some are still coming in, but I really, really wanted to speak about these. Um, I'm really excited about one of them, and then the other one, I'm excited about both of them actually, um, but one I haven't opened and one I already have opened. Uh, the one I've opened, so first of all, I'll talk about these. This the, These are the Right in the Rain Tough Mechanical Pencils. Now, I've been aware of these for a very long time, and I've seen all of your reviews um, on YouTube, and I've read about them, and I've seen pictures of them on Instagram and so on, and I, I really like Right in the rain products, but I live in the UK. So uh, the the thing that I, that put me off, not put me off, but kind of was putting me off was, well, first of all, the lead is one point one millimeter. Now in the UK, that's just not really easy to get hold of, especially where I live. Anyway, because I'm sure someone will watch this video and say, you know what, um, you can walk into your local corner shop and buy it. Not where I live. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. And believe me, if it was, I would know. Um, secondly, getting hold of um, replacements and additions isn't very, very easy. Um, and British man British companies tend, even though, and I've said this in my last videos, even though companies like Right in the Rain, Gerber, Streamlight, uh, Leatherman, uh, you know, they, they make amazing products and we love American products in the UK. For some reason, British companies don't always keep the stock and they, they might buy one and that get that gets immediately sold and then people you know other people want uh, want to buy stuff and they, it's not available so it becomes very very difficult to get hold of re replenishments and stock and i never understand why and to get stuff shipped over from the states again i don't understand why we have such a very good relationship with america uh in terms of trade but i don't understand why it costs so much money to to have things posted over and then they go through customs and then it's just a nightmare i don't understand and i wish you know a brexit isn't going to solve anything at all you know i don't want to get political but it's not going to solve anything at all it's just a mess but uh, i'm not ranting but it's just something that people need to know because that was one of the things that was influencing me buying this um you know i i love buying american products like frigid space pen zipper lighters leatherman or gerber and all that stuff but I need them to be available in the UK and I need and I, and I always say that if, if I break it or lose it or damage it I need to be able to call my call back the shop that I bought it from and say hi can you send me another one please um, but uh, I don't want to hear oh you know we only had one product and it's going to be I don't know it's going to be another couple of months before we get hold of another pencil or another pen but you know uh, so if anyone is listening in America can you pass this message on to Right in the Rain and to Fisher Space Pen and to Zippo just Increase your supply chain. You know, I really want your products here. So increase your supply chain. So um, my regular supply is Heine Haynes, but just, be, and this isn't, and like I always say, this isn't an advert for them. They don't even know I exist. I just buy from them. I'm just one of their customers. Um, but for me, I've used them for over eight years now in the UK, and they just seem to have all the stuff that I need. So again, the reason I bought, wasn't buying this, and I've been, I've been aware of this, and I've Googled over it, and I loved over it over, over Instagram and YouTube. But the reason I wasn't buying it was because every shop that I went to online, um, it wasn't available in any physical shop. So uh, the, the online shops only had this just this packet, but they did not have the refills. And when I was looking around at Hein Haynes, I 
came across, I, I was going through all the Rise and Rain stuff and I came across that they actually had refills for it. And, I, and again, you know, I, I was just jumping up and down and thanking Honey Haynes for having the forethought of having refills. So I went ahead and ordered. Uh, I went, uh, I wanted to have a look first. So I did, so I ordered two. Um, I wanted the yellow version and the black version as well, but they weren't available. They were out of stock. The red version comes with the red lead. Uh, the yellow version and the black version, as in the barrel colours, uh, come with uh, the normal graphite HB lead. So I bought two red ones which were available. Now they had other red and additional red ones as well, but I bought two just to have a look. Um, and then as soon as it came, I was going to do a video, but then I got so excited, so I actually opened one. Um, and I've fallen in love already. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get hold of Heine Haynes and I'm going to ask them to send me send me as much of their stock as possible because I'm gonna I've, I've fallen in love with this product um, and hopefully I'm going to try and convince them to get me more stuff from the US and if not if in the worst case they're not able to then I'm going to try and raid the right in the rain website uh, and I've got a couple of friends and family in America so I'm going to try and get them to get me as much possible in terms of lead and a couple of supplies and pencils and post them over to the UK um, yeah so if anyone's watching it right in the rain please write in the rain Talk to the amazing people at Honey Haynes and just send them stuff and I'll buy it. I, I will buy it without even asking for a discount. I will buy it straight away because your products are awesome. So, especially as an engineer. So, okay, so this is the Rat and Rain uh, Tough Mechanical Pencil and the version I have is the uh, 99, um, sorry, the RD as in red, 99. So I'll just give you, for those of you who, who aren't aware of this product, and I, the reason I said that is because not everyone is aware of the product. So it's just, you know, it's not, this is why I like, a lot of people criticize these kind of reviews that I do. But, you know, for people like me living in the UK or for any other country where products aren't immediately available, these product, these reviews are so very good for us because we get to see the product and research it. Um, and then, you know, we try, we're able to try and get it. So that's one in there. Um, I've already opened one up. So... If you are unaware, uh, this is a it's a mechanical pencil, but instead of having the click version, like for example, the Zebra pencil, uh, which I always forget the model, it's the M301, so it's a 0.5 millimeter pencil. This uh, deploys the lead by clicking. So the lead comes out and then you hold down the lever and you push the lead back in. So instead of this traditional version um, or the more popular version, and, and you know, okay. Um, this one is a twist version, so it's like the paper mate uh, non-stop kind of version. So you turn this barrel clockwise and the red lead should start popping out. There we go. So this is a 0.1 millimeter lead. And yeah, it is quite, it, it is the thickest lead I, I have ever worked with. Um, Again, it's not possible to easily just get hold of it in, in any uh, shop that you... So, okay, so the way you push it back in, you can't just push the lead back in, so you have to twist and push, twist and push, go against it. Um, let me see if I can just try... I think you have to make... This was one of the things that I find a bit difficult with... Oh, no, one second, just bear with me, I think. This was one of the things that I definitely found difficult in terms of... Um, so... Yeah, it takes a bit of effort to push it back in. There you go. It, it does take a bit of effort, and I, I'm not strong enough that to do it uh, easily. You can you can do it, but it just takes a bit of effort uh, to do. So it can be a bit fiddly, which is one thing that it goes against the pencil itself. But, you know, every product has its pros and cons. Every product has its um, good and bad points. So... Yeah, th this is the fiddly bit, but in so in order to change the lead, you, you just pull this off, and then this is the this is the plunger. This is the this is when you turn the mechanical pencil. So this inside will turn and push the lead out. Um, so this is the place where this only takes one lead. One one lead goes into here. There's only already one in there, so. You push the lead in and then you just push this plunger in like so. And then you line this up. You can see, let me just try and you can see that there is, you know, um, I need to get better lighting, I think. Better lighting and because I'm just in the lab, in the hangar, I have low, low lighting purposely. 
but they're not very good, especially with an iPhone. So you can see that you can see the pattern. It's not exactly square. In, it's not exactly um, circular inside. It's, there's a like an indent. So this goes into the indent like that, and then you just push it in and push close and a little bit of twist. So right to come out, and then left push in. Okay. So there we go. That's how you uh, use the pencil bit. And then where's the lead? Well, the lead is in the top. The spare lead holder is in the top. And then you get with it uh, six lead uh, six lead refills. And the lead is quite small, actually. I'd say it's about maybe two centimeters, maybe just an inch or something. I didn't bring a ruler this time. But there we are. That, that's quite small. Uh, I got rid of no, I don't know. I cleared it away. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it's about an inch. So I just pop the lead back in there and put the um, rubber back in. Now, yes, it has pros, yes, it has cons, as I've mentioned, but I have fallen in love with this product. And I'm going to buy more. I'm going to put one in my survival kit. I'm going to put a spare one in my bag. I'm going to put one in my jacket just so that I have them. They're super convenient because in the in, in the hangar, what we use, um, when we are looking at aircraft, um, uh, aircraft schematics, especially after an accident, what we tend to do is we use the red side of the pencil to mark on um, damage caused during during uh, before, during, and after an accident. And the blue we use, the engineering blue we use for any uh, any damage that might have been called pre-flight. So, for example, if there was a fatigue crack that then led to a to a, uh, to a break uh, that that ended up causing an air occurrence, an air accident, or something, um, then we will use the blue one. So we obviously everything now is done on the computer. Everything is recorded on the computer. But by law, we do have to. Um, have paper schematics and we have to draw everything out so we tend to use we have a lot of engineering conventions uh, so but generally in the field we, we will use red for structural damage and any type of damage or um, you know damage by uh, alternate means like for example if someone harmed the aircraft for example an explosive or something so where the, where the explosion happened or if um, there was a bird strike any external damage to the aircraft or if the wing broke off uh, we will mark that with red. We'll shade the area with red. But if there was, a, a, you know, a, there was a, a fatigue damage, or if there was an, an internal electrical problem that wasn't caused by the actual uh, flight itself, but was sort of it initiated before, we will mark that with blue because uh, then that indicates to us that the other aircraft in that um, category need to be checked. So it's just a color coordination that we use. So generally, we I I tend to use these um um Karandashi bicolor triple nines. That's also called the double nine. So I'm I'm just wondering if the 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 nine is a convention. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we I tend to use a lot. Of, I have boxes of these, but I really like this. Uh, so I am gonna order a lot more of these. So that was right in the rain. The right in the rain. I'm still getting used to the model number. The right in the rain number RD nine nine. And yeah, uh, I'll just show you the front cover again. And talking about the um, talking I made in the USA, which I absolutely love. Um, you know, I I guess I am being patriotic. So yeah, I I don't mind pa being patriotic to the USA. Um, so this is the lead. This uh, this is how it comes. Uh, I bought. So another thing that I really liked about Right in the Rain, and this is why I like American products, um, that they they foresee they for, they they look forward of just they don't want to just sell you the product. They want to see how you use it. So it is practically unheard of as far as I know. I, and I love stationery because my aunt is a teacher, retired teacher, and she brought us up on you know we were always surrounded by amazing stationery, um, because she loves stationery. We you know I I ended up loving stationery as well. And who doesn't love stationery? But anyway, um, you know, as far as I know, and I've bought a lot of mechanical pencils, it is almost unheard of to get two replacement uh, rubber erasers um, with a pencil. I have never seen that. And I've looked at Japanese pencils. I've looked at um, American pencils, European pencils. It's almost, I have never seen person. And I'm, again, and I'm sure someone will say, oh, you know, you haven't looked at that one. Fine. But as far as I have seen, you know, 
I have never seen a, a packet come with two replaceable rubber. So writing the name, that is a great bonus point. And I didn't know about that. I didn't see the packet because on the photograph, it just showed this. It didn't show the, I didn't see the packet. So I didn't know it. So that was a really good surprise that it actually comes with two erasers. Not knowing that, or maybe I missed that, but I have never actually seen other pencils come with that. And I know that because I buy a lot of pencils. Not knowing that, um, I did buy then two refill packs. Uh, with that and that was the reason that I bought erasers erasers so they come like this so you see uh, red pencil red lead uh, B so that's grade B that's nice to know that's really good to see I like the technical the technical details the American companies put on so black pencil is a dark lead that's a HB color the yellow pencil as in the yeah, the barrel is also a, a, a dark lead and that's a graphite but they're both graphite and they're HB graphite and the red one gives you red lead so I really like that and B is really good it's really soft to write with especially for on drawings and on maps that's why I want to put one in my survival kit uh, I'm going to put one in my survival kit and what I'm going to do is put uh, I'm going to leave the red lead in. I'm also going to put the other graphite lead box in there. Um, uh, graphite lead in here as well because there's plenty of space to do that. So then what I will have is I will have a pencil with red lead and graphite lead, and that'll be super convenient in in, in a survival in, in a survival uh, in a survival kit because I, in, a, in a survival kit I always carry two maps with me, and I know I know I know. One is never written on, and the other one, the primary one, is I I will mark where I've been, where I'm going. Um, timings and so on so that will be a fantastic pencil to have for navigation purposes um, usually I just use the Stadler pencils with um, a, a 2B lead so I bought two eraser refills I bought two refills for the red lead and I bought two uh, uh, standard HB leads dark, dark, they're known as dark lead so I'll show you the red lead packet just so you know and you know what I have said some um, I have said some things like that I didn't like about this pencil, but I would absolutely go ahead and say that yes, that's my view. But um, and as an engineer, I the, the context of those negative things is you know in terms of not being able to get the lead and hoping that the lead was bigger and sort of thing. Um, those are just views because I live in the UK and it's not easy to get over. If if I was in America, then I don't think I'd have those negative views because. I, I, it's easier to get stuff that made in America. I, it's easier to get stuff from America when you're in America. Um, then it wouldn't have any cons at all. I would be raving about this. But you know, even even now I'm still raving about it, I, and that's why I'm going to order more. So I'm I'm being balanced, and I'm you know I'm countering my own bias as well, which is what we engineers kind of do. But as engineers, we kind of look at the pros and cons of everything, and then we weigh up and we say, well, what's better and technically what is more convenient for us. So technically what is more convenient is that I really like this product. And then the dark lead, but um, obviously the, the logistics is a problem, so I am going to sort that out and address that. So this is the dark lead, this is the B. I do wish it was, hate. I do wish it was 2B or B lead. Um, that would be far more better for me but uh, they have decided to make HP. Maybe they might in the future. And I'm going to write an email to them, actually, um, saying thank you for making this product. But can you also make uh, B-Lead as well and make it much more easier for me to get hold of this in the UK? So I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Another thing about writing in the rain is, uh, another thing I like about American companies is when you write when you um, write a, a Twitter message to them, they, they will respond. That I love that customer service from the US companies. Whereas with other companies, you know, it's like, yeah, whatever, buy our product and we did, never want to talk to you again, especially if I have a negative opinion about a product. For example, I don't have a negative opinion, but say I did have a negative opinion about this product and I wrote to write in the rain and I said, hey guys, um, I don't think this is working. Can you fix this or can you amend this? You know what I'll get back? Okay, we'll have a look into that. Whereas if I did that to any other company, I don't, I won't even get a reply. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly sure that if I write to Write in the Rain and say, hi, P hi people at Write in the Rain, um, can you make this more accessible to the UK and can you supply us with more stuff? I'm fairly sure that they're going to say, okay, we'll have a look into that. And that I, I would just love. So that's Write in the Rain. Now, finally, I do like talking, sorry. <laughs> but I love these, I just make these rambling videos. So finally, this I'm super excited about. I don't have anything similar to this ever before. Uh, but I've always wanted one. So this is a bolt action pen. Um, there were lots of other designs, but the Heine Haynes ran out of them. And I got this from Heine Haynes as well. The the Lorax Limit is just the trade name for Heine, the official name for Heine Haynes. So this is the Bastion. I think that's the com company name. Excuse me. I should be clicking on my screen, not on the 
I'm clicking on here instead of my screen. So Bastion, uh, Bolt Action, Pen, Stainless Steel, that, I think that's the barcode number, and Ben, Pen, Beal, Tac, STS, okay, Steel. Um, so yeah, let's have a unboxing of this. With my Swiss Army knife. And... There's another sticker here, so just to show you everything. New Bastion Luxury X EDC Stainless Steel. Okay, let's see how this goes. Is it a push? Is it a pull? Oh, it's a pull. Oh, I like these kind of boxes. Ooh, okay. So what do you get in the box? Um, let's see, micro... <laughs> I'm just having that micro piece. I think it's supposed to be in here, but it's not. Never mind. So this is the pen. Oh, wow, that is heavy. Wow, that is really heavy. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, my arms are damaged, so I can, um, obviously you can't see that, but my arm is damaged. I have a splint up on my arm, and usually I have to wear a splint here as well. Uh, on my upper arm, I have a splint. Um, my God, I can feel, I don't have a way to measure that, but I can feel, Feel the weight of that. Um, let me, if you bear with me, I'm gonna do something really weird. I'm just gonna run into the the, the 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 kitchen part of my hanger and try and grab a cooking scale. Just bear with me one moment. Sorry. Let me see. Okay, I'm back. Now, I just have some rough kitchen skills. Uh, let me try and zero them in. I just want to see how many grams or ounces this pen is. It's super heavy. I've never um, seen a pen. Uh, not legal for trade. Well, I'm not a trader. Let's see. It's quite a bit. So let's have a look. It's... Um... Oh wow, okay. So this pen is exactly 100 grams, um, which is just about three and a half ounces. Yeah, so it's, let me recap that just in case. I, I just, let me just double check that. Recalibrate that, put that on. No, correction, okay. This is 80 grams. Uh, I'll do that again. I double check because I think I pressed it, pressed down hard my my arms. Okay, and just we always end up doing three measurements. Okay, so it's I don't have a digital scale, but it's I would say it's it. No, I think it was between that three times. So it was ninety grams, not hundred grams. It was ninety grams. Um, which 90 grams, which translates into um, three and a half ounces for a pen. That's quite a lot for me anyway. Okay, so let's have a look. So this says uh, Bastion on it, on it here. Now, obviously, because I am doing it, it's not going to focus. Can you see? Let me try and zoom in a little. Uh, how do you zoom? How do you I can zoom in. So it just says Bastion on here. Yeah, it says Bastion on here. So this is the bolt action pen. Now, this does take a Parker refill. Oh, okay. Wow. So this is super amazing quality. Can you see the line? I couldn't see the line. I mean, you really need some sort of microscope to see it. It's just very, very faint. I, I couldn't see it until I turned it. So where is the line is here? And you can't even feel it. Wow. So there you go. Can you see it now? 
That is super amazing machining. I mean, I, wow, as an engineer, I absolutely love that. So it has an O-ring inside, which is super cool. Um, and a spring for deployment of the uh, nib. Now this does have a uh, Parker style refill. I'm just gonna clean the tip of this uh, because it has a, um, a tip guard it had it had a rubber tip guard on it so let's see if i can find the rubber tip guard somewhere here uh, here we go so it comes with um a rubber tip it's not rubber i would say it's like um yeah it's just like a rubbery cardboardy type of tip guard and generally they tend to do that on very i mean they've done that so that's a really good attention to uh, detail not not they don't always do that uh parker doesn't the parker pens don't come with that but um that is really good attention to detail so uh, the uh, but it is just a generic one they haven't put in a, a brand one it doesn't matter because i'm going to replace this with a fisher space pen uh, refill so again american company fisher space pen the amazing thing about Fisher Space Pen is that they give you this uh, adapter. So with my um, stand Fisher Space Pen, th these adapters always hang on to these adapters because they're just so super useful. Um, and I have I, I always keep and this is my regular EBC uh, Space Pen. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna replace the the nib with the Fisher Space Pen, and I have loads of these. I bought these from I have an entire stock of them. So. Uh, coming back just to the pencil, I generally use these ones as well. These are by Stadler. These are 0.5 millimeter. Um, they are sort of like HBB kind of grade uh, in, in mechanical pencils. So this, again, I use this in the hanger as well. The um, blue, the red, and the green for marking on, on um, uh, corrections on uh, um, scientific lab stuff for um, uh, damage. So when we're doing non-destructive damage, uh, testing NDA, um, uh, non-destructive analysis or when we're doing a destructive analysis DA so we purposely destroy something to see its limitations or we do non-destructive testing to see um, uh, the um, the limitations of a product um, with Young's modulus and all that stuff so, so um, I, I tend to mark all that stuff on so I will replace it with the uh, pressurized um, sufficient space memory for, but at the moment I'm just going to keep this in here for now so we'll put this back in and uh, nothing else come out so the bolt does move the bolt does move when it's connected but it doesn't come out no okay so i'll put it back into that position and yeah let's move the bolt back wow i really like this pen people and you know what when you really tighten it up you cannot see the line uh, i'm sure probably now you're going to see it see it on here because i've said you can't see it but you know if you're not looking for it you can't really see it that is super cool quality wow okay so let's do this oh yeah oh yeah i like that and i like the fact that it's pronounced you see that a lot of a lot of um cartridges let me just move it in many ball points tend to like only have it up to here but the fact that it's like that, um, it's like that is super good because if you're using a stencil, then you can really just get into the stencil and do some, um, do some work. Wow, I really, really. Let me just quickly get back into my chair, um, and look up. So this is the first time I'm doing videos like this. Uh, so bear with me. I'm good. I am going to get sort of better equipment, um, and lighting stuff. I just haven't because I don't. I'm not used to doing videos, um wow wow yeah i like it it is heavy it is heavy um i'm trying to find the balance of it so i'm trying to find the center of the center of gravity so that's the center of gravity of the pen and that is super good that i i want another one now and obviously that is going to get played with a lot it's probably going to annoy the hell out of people. So one thing, uh, okay, so one, this is a little bit rough on here. Don't worry about it, I'm an engineer. Um, that is a little bit rough I, I because when you're doing that, it kind of, you, you kind of like feel it. So I wish they'd like 
chamfered that edge but this is getting into micro this is getting into if you are aware of the um if you're aware of the brand triple or design so this is what this is sort of their philosophy this is how many machinists and engineers work we literally we take a product and we we will literally find any problem with it that we can and we will highlight that um, a lot of people don't like that but that's nothing to do with people or the product that's what we engineers do that's what we um aeronautical engineers do we, we we when we're designing a product we want to find we want to know every limitation of that product now a lot of products uh, tend to be in service and and they will maintain their limitation and that's fine but we should know what the limitations are so that if something does happen then we know that something has that limitation has been exceeded if we don't know the limitation existed in the first place and the and and something has gone wrong catastrophically and especially with aeronautics where we're dealing with aircraft and we're dealing with people embarked on the aircraft we're dealing with life so you know as investigators we're charged with the with the legal responsibility of knowing um every limitation of everything um, that comes in so and, and same with the marine industry you know we we work closely and we 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 co-work we do we're co location and we co-work so um we we then end up doing that with our with our toys you know we end up doing that with our pens we end up doing the flash out with our field gear because we live in the field a lot so you know and as a prepper i i bring that skill over to um to prepping so it's just nice to be able to know the limitations so this does take a, it has two hex bolts here to arrange to for the clip and i'm sure you can just probably take the clip off if you're not a clip fan i i really like clips on things um i like clips on knives i like clips on le uh, my leatherman skeletal i like clips i have a clip on my leatherman wave a lot of people don't like i like clips um so yeah that is super, super comfortable. And unfortunately, let me just quickly see, I have a stack of notes here, trying to find. I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of work recently. Um, see if I can, yeah, that might do. Okay. So just to, just to show you something cool or weird. Um, so one week off, because I, so I told you last week that I was at university. So I will show you. I can't show you what I'm studying because um, a lot of that is sensitive information uh, about how we investigate accidents and stuff. Um, I'm not allowed to show you that. Uh, but I'll show you a one week's work. Okay. Honestly, I'm not joking. All right, here we go. Ugh, I can't even lift it. Look at the depth of that. That is one week's work. Literally, that is one week's work. Okay, um, so let me um, use this piece of paper. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so let's have a look. So what's the name? Let me get, get this name of the pen right. Let's see if this works now. Can you see my writing? Okay. Okay, yeah. So very good quality, um, good quality black, uh, black ink. Bastion. Bolt action. Yeah, so that is super good quality. And, you know, wow. I kind of want more. I'm hooked on this. And obviously, obviously, if you sat in a conference, that would annoy the hell out of someone. Um, but as an engineer, yeah, I think I'm going to show this to my engineering friends and they're just going to be so obsessed with that. That is super cool. Um, let me know what you think about this product. But yeah, one thing is that I, I, I do, I am getting scratches on my hand. Uh, from from this bit um, maybe I will just get a file I have a diamond coated file so um, I'll just maybe just a micron or something just chamfer the edge on that uh, but other than that uh, it's just a technicality for my fingers uh, you probably might not feel it but yeah I super like this pen wow okay uh, super comfortable you cannot feel 
you cannot feel the link. You cannot feel where it, uh, where the where the, the, where it's separated. And I didn't get any literature with this. It would have been nice to get some literature about the company and who they are. I'm going to Google them and find out. Um, I'm not aware of this company. It's the first time. So, wow, they really have machined this pen. And I don't even know where it's made. It doesn't say. So I will find out. I will find out. And I wasn't, I, I wasn't really expecting this to be super, super good and I was, uh, to be super, super mega impressed with it. But I am super mega impressed with it. And I really want to know more about this company because their machinists have done a super triple or design job. And uh, triple or design is like point decimal point zero zero zero. It's what it's what we use in engineering. So when we write um, a value in engineering, so for example, if something is four centimeters or something, we will write four decimal zero 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 centimeters. So that's the kind of technicalities we work to. And that, and even in uh, when they're doing when you're working in inches. So we're in Europe, so we use centimeters. But when they're working to inches, they they'll tend to go to de um, three decimal places and so on. Or significant figures or decimal places, whichever they, um, whichever they're required. Um, each um, specification requires you to work to a different. Um, their own, each client wants you to work to their own specification, but generally it'll be either three significant figures or um, three um, three decimal places. Uh, so I mean, if it's like four point one zero or four point one two, and there's nothing after that, we will put the extra zero in just because. Uh, that's just the convention. Yeah. Wow. Super, super excited about this. And finally, I'm just going to try out the, for you, the, the red. So let me just pull this up. Uh, so this is right. So it's a little bit right in the rain. So this is a B lead. Again, I would have preferred this to be a HB lead, but uh, it, it's fine. It really is fine. This will be really good for map work. Uh, obviously, this is why I suggested you carry two maps. People think I'm weird, but no, one map you should always carry so that um, it's unedited, so that if you have to communicate in during a rescue, you have an unedited map. Uh, because if you write over a detail, then you might give out the wrong detail, uh, especially if there's numbers or relief information. So one map should always be unedited, and one map you can edit on by writing your own, um, you know, you can put your own uh, diagrams on. Um, and I think I'm using the PlayStation ones here, but we pretty much design, we also use them in engineering as well, Wayfinder maps, um, each of these symbols. So yeah, this is, this, this is quite light. Um, I don't see if I can weigh that. I need to get an electronic scale to weigh, but yeah, I, it's not even registering on, 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 that's just a standard cooking scale. It's not even registering. So it, it is really light. I mean, it's a plastic. Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of like, I, I, no, I like it, not kind of, I like it. So that this get, gets a really big tick. And there is this, um, you know, when you're writing with it, there is this flex here. Uh, let me see, can you see that? Let me stand up for a moment. Sorry, apologize. Bear with me. Uh, where is the flex? It, uh, it's just here. So when you're writing, let's see if I can... There, can you see it? The line, um, this line here on the metal. So this, what this does is it reduces the stress on the nib. So when you, can you see it just expanding a little bit? So if you're writing, what this does is it removes the stress from the nib, which which then removes um, the, 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 the lead from snapping. So that's a very good design. Um, that's a very, very good, high quality design from right in the rain and it's just these small technicalities you see as engineers that's what we do we we end up being these a lot of these technicalities you don't even look for um but yeah these you know these are the kind of technicalities we we um I may, uh, I mean, obviously, right in the rain has some amazing engineers. So these are the kind of technicalities, and that's the kind of brilliance I love about American engineering. So yeah, um, two edition, two more editions, and obviously, more of those uh, I'm going to get. And this one, I definitely want. Yeah, I mean, I usually give out Fisher Space Pens, but I think I'm going to give out a couple of the buy buy a couple of these and give them out with some uh, um, Fisher Space Pen refills. So, you know, I mean, it, the, the, the park style refill is fine, but having a fish space pen refill in there would be perfect. And again, if you don't like fish, but some people don't like fish space pen refills, but you know, you can, you can use the Parker refill in there if you want to. 
yeah, so that concludes my um, today's uh, episode. Uh, have have a look uh, at these products if you like them. I really am absolutely in love with them, and they're going to be part of my EDC now. Um, it is slightly heavy for me, but I will get used to writing with it. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching, and um, I will hopefully um, see you uh, soon on some other videos. Thank you very much, and take care. Stay safe. Bye.